Injection molded shields for healthcare workers. Welcome to another episode. So this project was a collaborative effort between myself, Peyton Dean of Brick Tactical, and another guy, Brian Jeffries, neither of whom I had ever met before in person. And they are people I met through the, the local group. And one of the things that's so great about this group is how all of these people have come together in a time of need and they're just working on making things happen and delivering and help, helping the healthcare workers. So I've got a card up there to a video of Peyton. He's going to be doing a series on creating this injection mold. The local Washington group came up with this design and as you can see this is actually pretty close to that design and this is the final injection molded part so in this episode what I'm going to be doing is telling you a little bit more about this journey I thought it was going to be two more episodes to get here but we got it in one episode so the first thing I'm going to talk about is this right here and then I'm going to talk about the process and the story about getting to where we are today in one week and once I'm done with that I'm going to go back and take you through the process that I went through in Fusion 360 of creating the design that I gave to Peyton to create the injection mold and we also have a story that I'll tell you about uh, getting plastics etc some interesting stories this is what the part looks like when it comes out of the machine. This is where the plastic comes in and it, it comes in through the, the edge of the mold and then it comes through this runner and into a gate uh, over here and then there's another runner over here. And so the idea is that we want to feed the plastic basically down this way and down this way so that the only weld lines are going to be here and here. This plastic is actually really strong so there's, I don't think, any concern about uh, breaking these. Before we deliver them, we need to cut these parts off. So I have this cutter here, uh, which in the hobby industry is sold as a sprue cutter. Uh, these happen to be sprues. So it's pretty simple. You just take it like so. You want to get it... Uh, let me see if I'll do it this way. So you want to get it so that you're as close to the gate as you can, and then just snip. There's a little bit of a, a vestige there, which can be gotten rid of with a knife, but they're going to be putting foam on here, so it's not going to impact the use. And then, same thing here. To get rid of these two pieces, you just snip, and then snip, and now you've got a finished frame. Let me zoom out. So now you've got a finished frame. And you'll notice that the headband is free to move, but the part that holds the shield on is fairly rigid. Okay, here's the shield, and it has been cut on a Cricut. It has six holes here, which may be kind of hard to see, and then it has two holes on the side. So the way this works, and hopefully you'll be able to see this well, is you put the Basically what I do is I push down like this, and that allows me to push it down here, and then I can push it into the other side of the hole. So it takes a little bit of you know, finesse, but you know, once you've done it a few times, it's actually pretty fast. Okay, so that's on that side, and then here I'll do it again on this side, like so. And then the top folds over like this. And then again, okay, this goes in here like so. And this side here. And as you can see, that forms a top that helps protect the healthcare worker, not just in the front, but also on the top. As I said, the design was based on a design created by the, the local Washington group, and I'll have a link below. And what I did is I took that design, 
and made a couple small changes to make it easier to injection mold. So I added things like draft so it could come out of the mold and I made the headband a little bit thicker so that the plastic could flow more easily. So the next step was to get the metal required to make the mold. Uh, Peyton is uh, from Brick Tactical, makes the molds out of aluminum. And uh, he didn't have the aluminum he needed to make this mold. So first he had to figure out what material you know, what thickness, what size, etc. Then he contacted Online Metals, which is, you know, in Seattle, just not very far away. So they had some of the material, but not most of it. And he was trying to figure out what to do. So I told him about Zometry. He placed an order with Zometry. And then Brian, the third character in the Three Amigos, uh, did I really say that? Uh, got on the phone with uh, Zometry to expedite the order. And then he got on the phone with FedEx to see if he could get the shipment here earlier. And he was successful in getting one of the boxes here earlier, but not the other box. Fortunately, the box that he got here earlier is the one that had the larger pieces for the core and the cavity, which are the two pieces that take the most time to mill. So those arrived at the FedEx facility here on Saturday. And so I drove down to the FedEx facility and picked them up Saturday mid-afternoon and then dropped them off with Peyton. So Peyton started making parts for the mold Saturday evening. Once we uh, got past that, then the question was, what do we use for material? Peyton normally uses ABS for all of the products that he makes. ABS isn't as chemically resistant as we would like. Some of the chemicals that they use for disinfectant are, if I remember correctly, isopropyl alcohol, uh, chlorine bleach, and uh, something, uh, I can't remember the name of the other one. So we did some research, and for this type of applications, there are some materials that have really good chemical resistance. One is polypropylene, which comes in many different forms. Another is low-density polyethylene, LDPE, and the third option was HDPE, high density polyethylene. So Monday morning, I get on the phone with his supplier of plastic pellets to find out what's available. Most of the material like HDPE and LDPE and polypropylene, actually all the material that we were looking for is not in stock here in Washington state in their warehouse. So they would have to have it shipped up from Los Angeles. And that takes time. And we were trying to make this go really quickly. But then this guy, Al, did some more looking into their computer and he found three bags, uh, partial bags, of polypropylene no-break. Uh, the no-break means it's uh, tougher, so it's really, it won't shatter. It, it, it's hard to break. And they had uh, 124 pounds of the material in those three bags. Normally the bags are 55 pounds each. But, you know, each of the three bags was broken and didn't have all the material in it. Because they were broken bags and, you know, therefore damaged good, we got a really good price on them. And so we figured, okay, we don't know really how well this material is going to work. But, you know, the price that he uh, quoted us and the fact that they were here so that I could pick it up meant that I said, okay, sure, let's go ahead and do that. So the next day on Tuesday, I drove down to their warehouse picked up the plastic and then dropped it off with Peyton. Peyton finished the mold Tuesday night and then Wednesday morning got it mounted on the machine, adjusted a few things, heated up the machine, purged the machine of all ABS plastic and put in the new polypropylene. And then he did the next thing which is to create uh, test shots. Test shots are the first injections you do to see if the mold is going to fill correctly and if you can get the part out of the mold correctly. And amazingly, it worked perfectly the first time. So that means he's now ready for production, almost. So the next thing he did is he made a small uh, batch of the frames, which we are going to send out for a final test by local hospitals uh, to make sure that they're okay with it. He also needs to do a little bit of maintenance on his machine, so he's going to do that tomorrow, which is Thursday. And that means on Friday, we should be ready to go into production and start making these parts. 
The local Washington State group, after a number of iterations, came up with this design. And this design has some important characteristics. One is that it has the six holes here. These are the same locations as the holes that were on the Swedish North American design. It's basically designed to use a three-hole punch, a US three-hole punch, with the holes offset by half an inch from one side. And then you flip over the sheet to the other side and punch it again, and you get this hole pattern. It also happens to work really well because it was designed for it with the origami shield that I showed in the last episode. Now, since the, the, the last episode and this episode, I got the step file for the version two of this. And so because I have a step file instead of an STL, it means that I can work more easily with it in Fusion 360. There are some limitations though. And one of the limitations is that pretty much all of these edges have fillets. Because I only have the step file and not the Fusion file, I can't easily remove all of the fillets. Um, so the other thing is, if I want to change the thickness of this, which I do, uh, that's also hard to do with a step file. Now, as to why I want to change the thickness, let me show you how thick this is right now. So if I go here and then measure on the other side, you can see it's uh, currently one millimeter. One millimeter is pretty small for a cross section this large. So this would be a lot harder to injection mold. What I wanted to do is to make this so that it was closer in thickness to the 1 16th inch thick strips that I was using of styrene. You know, the plan for this is to use polypropylene, which is a little bit uh, softer than polystyrene, I think. Not really sure. I have to try it out. So I wanted to make this thicker as well. Now, another thing is that you can see that this design is not symmetric. It's designed to be 3D printed. So it's designed so that the bottom here lays flat on the surface of the 3D printer. And therefore this band here, which is 10 millimeters wide to be more comfortable on the head, is extending above the rest of the frame rather than symmetric around the frame. The rest of the frame is uh, five millimeters tall. So with all of these things in mind, I decided it would be faster to just go ahead and create a brand new component, which I'm doing here. The first thing is I set the plane in between uh, the, two, the two surfaces of the existing part. And that's because I want my part to be symmetric around the Z. I then created a sketch, which I will show you. And the sketch is somewhat loosely based on the existing model with uh, some constraints drawn in there. And you can see here, it's pretty much dead on, but uh, for, this, and for this part, it's pretty close. There are some differences here in terms of the curvature of what I have versus what they have. But those differences uh, most likely are not going to be someone that anyone wearing this is going to notice. So I figured that would be fine. So once I extruded that, let me hide this part. Well, actually, you can see it. So you can see this gives this part here, which is the outer curve for holding the shield. And then the inner curve here that attaches the headband to the outer part. I then uh, had the sketch here for adding the cleat. The cleat is where the elastic strap will attach. And they have two of the cleats, or I should say a 2x cleat, not sure what to call it. I'm not sure why they had that, so I simplified the design by just having a single cleat. The next thing I did is I added this strap here. Um, the headband. And you can see I made it quite a bit wider. As I mentioned, theirs was one millimeter. I made it 2.7 millimeter, which is pretty close to 1 16th of an inch. And one of the reasons for making it this width is because uh, it, it'll be easier to fill the mold. But the other thing is that when I add draft, you know, the top and bottom is going to become a little bit thinner. And I want to make sure all these features can easily be milled with a 1 16th inch diameter end mill because uh, that's you know fairly strong and you can go faster in terms of milling it. All right, the next thing in, if I hide this, you can see that you know this is now symmetric. Uh, continuing on, the next thing that I added is this connection here between the cleat and the rest of the headband. Then I added uh, these 
nubs or cleats, not sure what to call them. This is where the holes in the clear shield will go. And this is not the final shape. This is just a quick and dirty shape. I added some fillets on top here. Originally, I added the fillets later after I had added draft, but um, at some point Fusion didn't like that. So I discovered that adding the fillets earlier took care of the issues with uh, Fusion. Here, what I did is created the parting line. The parting line is going right through the middle in terms of Z. And so this is what's going to separate the core from the cavity in the mold. Then I start to add draft. First, I added draft here. This is kind of an approximation of the oval shape of the original design. And then I added draft to the rest of the model. And I wanted to add draft everywhere except for on this face here. And the reason I didn't want to add draft on this face is because this parting line here, if you do have draft, is going to be no more noticeable. And so that's something that people might um, feel if it were on their face for too long. Now, after doing this design, I discovered that they're planning to put foam on here, so it's a lot less of an issue. Okay, next thing is um, I have this operation you can pretty much ignore it. It was to get rid of the draft uh, because at one point I did have uh, Fusion was insisting on putting draft on this angle, even on this side, even though I told it not to. Here I'm rounding the edges to make it a little bit more comfortable so there are no sharp edges here. And then this is where I start to add the fillets to all the different parts. So to there, to here, to all of these edges. The fillets represent what you'll actually get when you use an end mill, but um, in terms of the, the side fillets. But the top fillets make it uh, so it's a softer design and you know it looks nicer when it's that way. Uh, fillets there, etc. Once this was all done, I mirrored it to the other side. And so now this is the full part. And then I joined it together so that uh, this would all be a single piece. I sent this design to Peyton at uh, Brick Tactical and he put in quite a bit of work and came up with this. This is the injection mold for this part. And uh, this is pretty much the maximum size that he can put into his machine. He has a Boy 22S. Um, and you can see it's made out of the two mold halves here. And then we have uh, spacer blocks that um, are used. Let me uh, switch to this view here. So uh, what we're seeing here is these are called the ejector plates. The ejector pins move up and down. And so we need to have spacers between this part here and what mounts to the machine itself. So let me go back to where we can see things better. The ejector pins are here. Uh, some of these are not actually ejector pins, like these are return pins. Uh, and the return pins will basically, when the two mold halves close, push the ejector pins back into place. And I believe there are some springs holding this open. But the other ones here, like this one, this one, etc., will be used to push the part out of the mold once it's finished injecting. As you see, it took us uh, about a week to go from the idea of having an injection mold until we got to the point of having parts ready to come out of the machine, which is pretty fast. So I'm pretty happy how that uh, turned out. Uh, if we are lucky, the supply chain will catch up fairly quickly and within a month, po possibly less, we won't need this injection mold anymore and that's fine. The whole purpose of this mold is to be a stopgap until the supply chain catches up. If you stayed with me till the end of the episode, thanks. This is a long episode, I realize. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. Stay healthy. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.